In this video, we will learn the process of safely migrating .NET function app from in-process model to isolated worker model. So, migrating your function app to isolated worker model helps you to run your .NET class library functions on a version of a .NET that is different from the version used by function host process. So we all know what is the difference between in process model and isolated worker model. So now uh, let's see how we can migrate of our existing Azure function app which is written in some other version of .NET let's say .NET 6 or .NET 7 to a .NET 8 isolated worker model which is uh, currently the latest one. So as we all know that for any .NET project uh, for Azure function that we write and if it uses isolated worker model, it is nothing but a .NET console app project that targets a underlying supported .NET runtime. And there are some basic files that are uh, mandatorily required in .NET isolated project. So those files are host.json file local settings.json file then you have your c sharp project file and then you have a program.cs files which is nothing but the entry point for your app and then any code files that will be defining your functions so we will see uh, that when we are upgrading most of the changes will happen in these files when you upgrade your existing uh, .NET uh, in-process uh, model app to isolated worker model app, okay. So let's see, uh, let's see an example of a .NET 6 CS project file, uh, which is uh, this is what it looks like. So if you see here, under property group tag, you have these properties. Okay, where you have target framework as .NET 6.0 and then as your function version is v4 and then you have some root namespace. There are no more uh, tags under property group tag here. And then you have a package reference under item group that is Microsoft.net.sdk.function with version 4.1.1. So if you see, this is how your current .NET 6 CS project file will look like, okay. Now, when we upgrade it, when we upgrade it to .NET 8 isolated project app, what are the changes that will happen? Or what are the changes that you will have to do to upgrade this? So first of all, you need to set the property group dot target framework to .NET 8.0. So if you see here, here this framework version will change to net 8.2 and then you have to change the, uh, no, this is your function version will remain as v4 and then you have to add another output type element to the property group tag and value for this will be exe. Okay, and then uh, when we saw this uh, package reference under item group here, this will be completely removed and this will be replaced with all these package uh, references. You need to add all these NuGet package in place of Microsoft.net.sdk.functions. You need to remove any reference for this particular NuGet package. Okay, apart from all these, you need to add one more item group tag and under that you need to reference to system.threading.execution context. You need to add this particular uh, tag as is. Okay, so after you make all these above changes, your .NET 8 CS project file will look like this. Okay, and you have some new tags here under property group and under item group you have new NuGet package references and apart from that you will be adding new item group tag under which you will be referring to system.threading.execution context. So this is the changes that will happen in your .cs project file. Now you can make these changes manually but instead of making it manually you can also make all these changes automatically. So that you can do using .NET upgrade assistant. So if you go to this link, 
go to this link and if you see here we have a dotnet upgrade assistant so you can install this upgrade assistant into your visual studio and once you install this so i'll show you an example now here we have a example of a dotnet 6 project if you see here i go to the properties and this is azure function app with target framework dotnet 6.2 and if we go to the CS project file, if you see here, we see that there are only two tags here under property group, which is uh, one referring for Azure function, another one for target framework. And then you have a package reference under item group. So in order to upgrade this particular Azure function sample, so we have some function written here. This is a HTTP trigger function. Okay, we will come back to this particular file later. First, let's upgrade .cs project file. So, here all the changes that I have shown you that we have to do, we will not do manually. Okay, so now let's see uh, how, how do we upgrade it in Visual Studio. So, as I told you, you can have uh, upgrade assistant uh, installed in your Visual Studio and then when you have got that extension installed then we have something called upgrade here when you right click on your project just click on upgrade and just try to select dotnet 8.0 and say upgrade selection so it will upgrade your project so if you see it's uh, working and the upgrade is happening Yeah, so now your project has been upgraded. Now, if you see when your project has got upgraded, if you see your .cs project file, the changes that we have discussed will take place, has taken place. You see the version has been changed, output type, attribute has been added. And then you have another item group tag wherein, uh, yeah, here you have another item group tag wherein you have a uh, uh, statement called system.threading.execution context and all your uh, package reference under item group that was uh, there earlier has been changed with microsoft.azure.functions.worker. Apart from all these, what are all other changes that takes place is, if you see here, this was all the changes that happens to your CS project file. And then if you see here program.cs file. Now this is the file which is nothing but your entry point. So earlier we used to have startup.cs file. Now startup.cs file you need to delete and all the data from your startup.cs file, uh, data in the sense all your dependency injections that you do or uh, all your operations that you do in your startup.cs file will move to program.cs file. If we go back to our document, so if you see here, uh, yeah, before that, before pro before going to program.cs file, you should remember that once you have upgraded, you should check your project and you should remove all the references that uh, all your references from your application uh, related to Microsoft.azure.webjobs namespaces or Microsoft.azure.function.extension namespaces. Okay. Now coming to program.cs file, so here you will have a host builder class. You will be creating a object of host builder class which has a method called configure services. So now in your startup.cs file, you used to have a function startup attribute. Okay. Now you will be removing that function startup attribute and you will be using configure service method to do that same uh, uh, job. Okay, so basically you will be removing startup.cs file completely. So this was all about program.cs file, which is nothing but your entry point in .NET 8 isolated project. Now coming to func function signature changes. So now there are some key changes that takes place to your function signature. Uh, function signature means your attribute, function attribute your function uh, logging and then trigger and binding attributes or parameters that goes into your function signature. Now coming to function attribute, here for function attribute, earlier you would have the attribute as function name. Now which is replaced with 
something called function so if you see here we have already upgraded now but earlier this was before upgrading this was a, this was a, a, this attribute was something like function name but now when we upgraded this has changed to function okay so this is just a string replacement you can just replace function name with function but if you are doing it automatically it will automatically change it to function apart from that there are significant changes with respect to logging uh, in within your function so earlier you used to have something like a parameter on in your function i logger parameter that you will pass here in your function signature as a parameter okay but now that i logger uh, parameter will uh, be uh, not there and what you have to declare you have to declare a property with i logger and then you need to create a constructor of your function class and then you need to pass that as a parameter to your constructor and once you create uh, this uh, parameter here in your constructor you can just use this logger object to log any information and then you will be removing the parameter i logger parameter from your function signature so these are the logging related changes that takes place when you migrate to dotnet isolated dotnet 8 isolated function app okay and then coming to trigger and binding changes now first of all you need to remember that you need to remove any reference to microsoft.azure.webjob statement basically what happens when you have upgraded your project so some errors will occur okay some package references that your function was making towards microsoft.azure.webjobs will be showing in error state so you need to remove all the references to microsoft.azure.webjobs and you need to add a using statement so basically in your code uh, you need to remove the using statements related to microsoft.azure.webjobs and you need to add a using statement for microsoft.azure.functions.worker okay trigger and input output bindings you should refer microsoft documentation for dotnet 8 isolated azure functions and you should uh, refer to that document and change your uh, uh, these things accordingly basically triggers are almost name the same way for example q trigger attribute will remain same in both the models but coming to input bindings input bindings is going to change so earlier like if you say cosmos db if you have a input binding with name cosmos db now it will change i mean the attribute will change something like cosmos db input and also for the output bindings like if you have a q output earlier we used to just uh, put the attribute as q but now that attribute in this model in the dotnet isolated model will change to q output so you can change all these attribute parameters based on the documentation that is uh, present on microsoft uh, site next we have a local dot settings.json file so here also we will have to make a change uh, this file is uh, needed when we run our uh, project locally right so in order to run locally in an isolated worker process you should make sure that you change function worker runtime value to dot net isolated so this is the change that you need to make in local dot settings dot json file so next uh, uh, this is an example of your http trigger that we have just seen in visual studio so i you can just uh, see here so if you see here this is your dot net 6 in process model and if you see here here the name is function name attribute is function name and then your i logger is here as a parameter okay and but if you go to dot net 8 isolated model function name is changed with function and then your logging part if you see we have declared a property and then we have declared this i logger as a parameter inside the constructor and we are using this underscore logger to start logging our logs so this is the changes that we have seen already in visual studio now coming to upgrade your function app in azure so basically this all we have seen via visual studio but now when we go to azure now if you have to upgrade this 
so basically what you uh, have to do is go to configuration this is how you need to do in as uh, from your azure here you have a function runtime here you replace it with isolated okay and then say okay and then say save until it uh, gets saved so this is the setting that you need to change in your function app apart from that what you need to do you need to just publish your upgraded project to your upgraded function app but if you don't want to go and manually change okay you can just simply publish also you can just simply publish from visual studio an isolated worker model to an existing function app you will be prompted uh, to let visual studio upgrade the function app during the deployment so basically if you don't make this change this function worker runtime application to dotnet isolated if you don't go into your azure portal and change it uh, manually you can just publish via visual studio and that visual studio itself will prompt you to upgrade the function app in the portal and then if you say yes it will only upgrade it it will only do all these uh, these both these steps and then uh, your app will get published onto your azure function app which will be running on a dotnet isolated mode okay and this was like when you are publishing from visual studio but then if you want to deploy your function app or your dotnet project function app via bicep or arm templates there also you need to make sure that you add the setting uh, with function worker runtime as dotnet isolated you need to add the add this app setting so that when you deploy uh, as part of your arm template or bicep template then this function se setting will be present in your configuration in your uh, uh, function app uh, configuration in azure portal and that way uh, this will be running in your .NET isolated isolated mode so right now this is not in isolated mode because we have not published yet our .NET 8 function app This is .NET version 6.0 only, but once you publish that, it will be showing here .NET version 8.0. Thank you.